Video game design is an intricate art. The way levels are designed and how we as players interact with the environments can sometimes make or break the game. Intuitive level designs that can inherently train and teach the player what the game is all about are brilliant models of how to effectively build a game. It's the equivalent of writing a screenplay and never directly telling your audience information about the characters or their backgrounds. We as a viewer, as a consumer, would rather put two and two together for ourselves and make an aha moment out of it. Games like Crash Bandicoot, Mega Man, Castlevania, Dark Souls, all have amazing level design. But how does level design fit into a game like a first person shooter? Call of Duty, Team Fortress, Rainbow Six, how is it that these games can be so successful time and time again? After all, the primary features of these games are nothing but multiplayer, right? So, is there really any sort of intricate and thought-out designs put in place for these games? Well, of course. It's an idea called asymmetrical map design. Each new stopping point on the player's circulation through the map should alter who gets an edge from the asymmetric terrain, which keeps the map feeling challenging but fair. Take Blizzard's award-winning hit, Overwatch, for example. It's a game that consists of six-on-six -six teams working together in order to secure an objective of some sort. Holding that choke against them is really good. It's what they did to us. It's a numbers game that heavily relies on the teamwork and coordination of each team member in order to effectively take the objective, or to defend it. So now, what do I mean when I say asymmetrical map design? Well, there are mainly three types of maps and objective games to play within Overwatch. There's Payload, King of the Hill, and Control Point. Of course, there are the couple of hybrids, but for the sake of simplicity, let's just identify what these three are. The first kind of game type is Payload. The objective is simply being pushing a payload through different checkpoints until reaching the end, and defending it if you're from the opposing side. These usually take place on maps such as Watch Point Gibraltar, Route 66, and Dorado. These maps inspire teamwork through the use of pushing the payload. You step out of your spawn and you are told to either defend the payload or to move it. However, the payload can only move if your team is on or near it. But of course, it stops if the other team is doing the same as well meaning coordinating your efforts in order to diminish the numbers of the opposing team is important for making the objective secure. Oh, we got it. Well Took all our time, but we got it. But why is this significant? Because let's imagine how the game would be if there wasn't a payload at all, if there wasn't an objective at all. It would devolve or digress into a game of utter nonsense, a game centered around eliminations. People could simply play by themselves without ever having to worry about teamwork, because there is no other goal. Now, let's talk about the second game type, King of the Hill. It's a straightforward single objective in the middle of the map. The more players stand on it, the faster the capture bar fills until the point is yours. And by working together to defend the point from being captured by other players, you're then taught that this objective is the epicenter of the game, and what your team should be striving to work around. But what is it about these two objectives that make the game so great? Why are they so integral to the game's design? Well, it's because of the map and level design, which inherently teaches you that teamwork is essential, which is the whole point of the game within Overwatch. There is no one telling you that teamwork is the core value of the gameplay here. There is no tutorial that teaches you the dynamics of working together in order to take over the objective. You're simply thrown into the game on your first match, being told to either attack or defend the objective. That's it. So how does one learn to play this game effectively? What is it about the game that lends knowledge to you? It's through the level design itself. You quickly begin to understand that pushing the payload is good and is important for victory. And you also begin to understand what the obstacles to get over are once you realize that enemy members can contest and stop the payload from moving completely. On maps like Payload, the first checkpoints are the closest to your spawn on the attacking team, with multiple pathways leading out of your spawn and lots of cover to protect your team. 
as you get to the second and third point onward, you notice that you begin to go down much more narrow pathways with less routes to take, and you begin to fight in more funneled, somewhat open areas that begin to make the fights between teams a lot more difficult than in earlier parts of the match. This accomplishes a few things for the game on a design level. First, it provides a sense of progression. That sense of progression that you receive from playing other games, knowing that you've made it past level 1 and are now in, say, level 5 or level 50, for example. And it feels good to have progression, to have some sort of player feedback on your actions. And then secondly, this also gives you variation on the aesthetic of the level design. This way, maps don't always feel so stale, having to look or play in the same sort of environment over and over. Lastly, the third important note to take from this kind of design is that it also affects the gameplay. It affects which heroes gain a sort of advantage in positioning, which again is essential to the teamwork aspect of Overwatch. At Watchpoint Gibraltar, for example, the first checkpoint takes place outdoors, with a lot of cover and multiple pathways to take in and out of your spawn area. This part of the map is great for characters like Farah, who can use the advantage of the vertical scales and platforms and outdoors to fly, take cover, and shoot. Or another character like Junkrat, who can take advantage of the angles and retreating behind cover in order to set up traps. But once you get to the second checkpoint, where it becomes an indoors type of area, it might be harder for Farah to fly as high and get as much aerial advantage as she previously did. Another example of this is the third point in the map of Eichenwald, where Farah had the advantage of the skies in the first two points of the match, but now is restricted by the time she storms the castle walls. See, when you consider which parts of the map you're on, it affects your character choices, which in turn affect your team composition and teamwork. This is the brilliance behind the map design of Overwatch. At a fundamental level, the maps teach you that 1. Teamwork is important, and number 2 that, depending on which point of the map you're on, certain characters gain advantage. Remember that term I used earlier? Asymmetrical map design? This is because characters that depend on flanking may receive an advantage on maps like King's Row, where there are always at least one or two flanking routes to take. Or maps that have a lot of verticality, give an edge to characters such as Farah or Widowmaker, who can take advantage of the high ground and certain angles in order to gain a line of sight that allows them to kill more easily. And again, the size, the amount of cover, and the amount of verticality or horizontal nature of the part of the map you're on are also factors to consider, depending on whether you're at the first or third checkpoint of the map. Or, in the instance of King of the Hill, the maps may be designed to be more symmetrical there, but the multiple branched paths make for certain advantages and disadvantages depending on where you wish to create a choke point to hold off the enemy team, if you've been successful at taking over the objective. This, combined with the fact that King of the Hill maps always have three different variances per round, make all the more interesting plays for your characters and for your teams. All of this is expressed solely through playing the game and learning and understanding the maps. The game teaches you, through core design alone, how the game is meant to be played. That an objective is important and that it needs a team effort in order to be secured, or that the maps teach you which route and which characters can be effective here or there. This is what I was talking about earlier when I meant that good games will teach you how to play mainly through its build and design. This is that aha moment when you realize that the reason you're losing is because nobody is contesting the point, or nobody is pushing the payload. It's that moment when you realize that you need to focus fire one enemy at a time and gain a number advantage in order to beat an enemy team off of your objective, or when you realize that that Hanzo player needs to switch. Either way, it's obvious when you look at it that Overwatch has had some thought put into its creation and map design. Finally, the last thing I'd like to talk about is the third game type within Overwatch, and that is the two control point game type. These are the maps like Hanamura, Volskaya Industries, and Temple of Anubis. A lot of players, myself included, feel as if two control point maps might be the worst ones in the game. They're built to be a bit too asymmetrically, the first point to take over is much closer to the attacking side spawn than the defending side, and when it comes down to the second point, 
the defending side's spawn is much too closer to the point. This means that once point A is taken over, it becomes nothing but a grind fest for point B. Defenders can almost instantly return to the point, and it really becomes a matter of who can gather their ultimates first and combine them accordingly in order to create a large enough wipeout. To quote a couple of players that I have asked on Reddit, they've said, I feel the main reason that the second capture point of maps such as Temple of Anubis, Volskaya Industries, and even the final points of maps such as King's Row and Route 66 is that the respawning defenders can get to the point whilst the team fight is still going on. And another quote, the combination of fairly short respawn times in the distance from defending spawn to the second point makes it too easy for defenders to win in situations where they generally shouldn't. So, in order to correct this kind of design, some possible solutions would be either to make the spawn time longer for the defending side, or redesign the spawn point completely to be taken a bit farther back. Either of these would promote what Overwatch is all about, teamwork. Because with these maps, it's sometimes a bit too easy for a single Mei to go out into the point after death, use her ult, and stall for time for her teammates to come back. Or in worst cases, teams can simply go out one or two at a time just to merely run the clock, and if they're lucky, they can get one or two kills based off of trickling team members, which can then lead to the attacking team having to travel so far back from the spawn back to the point, whereas the defending team merely run in and manage to whittle down the attacking numbers until the whole defending team comes back. And this is counterintuitive to what the other maps promote. The idea of staying as a team in order to outnumber the others. I really do enjoy Overwatch and all of its heroes. The design and overall aesthetics of the game are wonderful, and the designers have done a lot so as to make teaching the game for new players much easier. This game has a lot of fun and brilliant moments in it that I hope to continue seeing in future updates, and in future video games in general. After all, what's the point of watching a movie if everything good is given right off the bat? What's the point of reading a story if nothing is written well? And what's the point of playing a video game if none of it is built to teach you through its design and reward you for learning and winning? Thanks for watching.